Okay. Um, I figured some some people would find this useful, so I might just add this with the show of death for the uh, Fluval G series. But since I had this new, uh, I just got that G, this new G6. I had figured I'd show you how to actually set it up. Okay. So we'll go through the steps on how to set it up. Now the only things I have out here are really well that you need. I have the the uh, filter itself and then obviously has the cartridges and we'll take care of that probably first okay then we've got our first box of course it has our manual and more importantly our tubing and uh, I don't think this was actually in there but either way your seal and your uh, biomax of course and then most of probably more extensively at least is your uh, parts box okay and I'm basically showing you how to set it up from from square one okay so literally this stuff just kind of came out of the box um and i'm literally going to show you what to do right out uh, out of the box okay so now this is all set except for that you have to one you want to rent you don't have to but i give this a good rinse okay and then this as you can see the carbon's in a bag and of course you have to wash out your carbon if you've ever used it before you know you always got to wash carbon okay guys now that we have the uh, cartridges here in the sink to wash out I'll just show you how to rinse them out and stuff um, I kind of don't have my tripod in here my bathroom's really long and skinny so we really don't have a lot of room here so I'm kind of going to be holding this and trying to show you okay first off we have our mechanical cartridge here all right and what you do is you just twist this part off oops and it comes off like that then you have this and this just pops off well it doesn't really pop it slides yeah, I like that, but it's usually not that hard. Okay. Alright, and all I'm going to do is just give it a good rinse, give it a crack again. Should be in there. It might be a good idea to open this back part, but I'm not going to. I think it'll be fine. But when you're maintenance, maintenance you, know, you will have to. <laughs> And then of course you just if I don't, I don't know if I just got that but you just slide it you know pop it right back on and then this you just uh, there's two notches on here as you can see at the top and this here, this is hard to do with one hand <laughs> and this just rotates back on you just split basically place it on the middle and it rotates back on and there you go and then you're going to do the same thing with this. Or, I'm sorry, no, you're not. You're going to, you have two tabs. And notice that this side has one big arrow. And this side has two small arrows, okay? So, um, you don't really need to remember that because it has it on the, uh, the cartridge here, obviously. But you will need to know that you need to match those up when putting it back together. All right, now this is gonna need two hands. So I'm sorry about this, guys. It's just, this is the best I can do right now. This is why I should help fund Aquarium Tech and I can get like a, a Unipod or something. Yeah. Or like a wall mount, a traveling wall mount. Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but you know, you press these tabs in, there's two of them like I just showed you and you pull it right off. Uh, it's usually not this hard. It's probably just because it's brand new. Okay. And it's going to be in the plastic. And you just pull it out. <laughs> this is really being difficult. Okay. And I got that. And I'll give this a rinse. Do you have to be Alright. And then we're going to open the plastic. Okay. 
just ripped it open. <laughs> I feel like a beast. I am a beast. Okay. Sorry guys, hard to do one he is here. should have just got somebody to help me. Anyways, now this is the one you actually need to make sure you rinse good. I don't know if you can see, but there's carbon, little bits of carbon and stuff coming out. Alright. Now it's not technically harmful to your tank. In fact, it purifies water, which is the whole reason you use it, but it's not really all that useful. And I believe last time I checked, I'm not 100% sure on this, it can raise your pH, and of course it did. It just doesn't look good in your tank, and it creates dust and stuff, so. There's a number of reasons why you want to wash it out, so. so I think it, it can affect your water chemistry when it's free floating around like that. I'm not sure if it's actually bad for the fish to come in contact with it, but I highly doubt it, so. Make sure you get this good. You see how the water's starting to turn. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It's starting to change to almost the uh, grayish, blackish color. That means there's still carbon coming out of here. With using the carbon, if you can see, there's a tab right here that comes out. And of course, there's if you can see here, there's one side that's flat, which is this side where my finger's at. The rest of it's round. Well, you want to line it up here if you can... See, there's a flat side on here, and there's a place for a tab, and you slide it in, just like that, okay? And remember what I said about the arrows on the cap here? Well, see, so you got your two arrows here, and your two arrows there. And you just, you can kind of just, like, slide it on, and just, right, like, just like that, okay? And we'll be back with the filter. Okay, now we're back with the filter, and we have our cartridges right here, and I'm going to leave them out, okay, for a reason, and I'll show you. Because the next part that I usually do is I take this off and put this back down. Open it up with the four tabs, and here I need two hands. Okay, pull it up, and remember what I said, be very careful putting this down okay there is a stand so the sensors don't touch the bottom okay but just be careful with that all right next we need to take out this tray okay and we'll get to these in a second next we need to install this usually the bag gets a little bit of uh, oil in it usually the bag comes with a tad bit of oil okay and sometimes it sticks to the bag but you want to make sure this is well oiled here okay now what I mean by well oiled really is just that it it's sli it's slightly wet and not dry to the touch, okay? Now with this you don't have to use any kind of special oil, okay? Just every time uh you take it off or you take uh the top off, uh you might want to put some water on the ring, okay? And I'll show you how I usually do it here in a second. And of course, you just place it. It's kind of already pre-traced out, but it is rubber and it flaps around. So you just push it into the edges. It goes in very easily. But the one thing I need to mention, see this tab? There's a designated slot for it right here. Okay? So that needs to go there. And that's where you usually start. And then see, I don't even have this in yet. And it's pre-traced. So... And just make sure you tuck it all the way in. Now this is the seal, so basically the top and bottom half don't leak, okay, when you have them connected. And it's also going to make it harder to take your top on, off and on. So this is why I did this now instead of earlier, alright? And next we're going to deal with the media baskets here, but I'll show you how I usually lube that. Stick my hand here, or my finger, here in the tank. I'll get a little bit of water on it. And really, I kind of got it on all my fingers and my hand, and I just go around like this. And I get a good amount of water. You know, usually I'll actually have a cup or a bucket that I can constantly stick my finger into. And I'll just go around and hit the edge of it like that. And that's you, that's all you need. 
I don't know if it says it to do this in the instruction manual for it, but I know it used to in all the older Fluval stuff, and it's always worked, so I always do that. You don't have to use oil, and in fact, I don't even suggest it, because it can get into your water supply. As you can see, there's not much room for air there. Now anyways, next what we have is, we're going to be going back to the ba bathroom for this, is our media baskets. So we got three media baskets, and we need to fill them with our Biomax. So I'm going go to go back to the uh, bathroom for this, because the Biomax obviously makes a chalky mess. So, here we go. Alright. Okay guys, um, now we've got our media baskets and our Biomax, or actually G-nodes, okay. And make sure you make note, even with the G3, they come in two bags. Actually, I think they have it in one big one like this for the G3. I've only had one, so I don't remember. But um, uh, just remember, you'll have two bags of media. You'll have the small ones like this, okay? And you'll have the big ones like this, okay? It's very apparent. <laughs> and anyways, uh, like I said, I only got... Uh, me right now for the camera and I can't get my tripod in here or at least where it would be useful so um let me go ahead and put down the camera and I'm gonna fill the media baskets up okay now what you want to do when you're filling the media baskets is what I usually do is I'll place I'll place one in there and really you're supposed to distribute these evenly between the baskets and that can be a little tough because it's kind of like at least me, I try to get it very, very even, okay? But anyways, um, usually I just pour, I use my eye, and I kind of pour about a third of each into each basket, okay? And then once I have it all distributed to the baskets, I figure out uh, and redistribute it to each of the baskets, and, uh, you know, then I just go from there, okay? So I'll be back when I have the media baskets full, okay? So, oh, and just like I said, note, you should probably fill it over a sink or a bathtub or something you can easily wash out because this makes uh, a mess when you pour it out, okay? Okay, now I'm still filling the media baskets, but here's another tip I'll give you. Um, they, each, each media, even the big stuff too, I do the small stuff first, but the big media and the small media each come in two bags, okay? I believe they're both equal in quantity, okay? So what I do is I measure out two thirds from each of them with my eyeball. Pretty much eyeballed it pretty well. I mean, they all have about the same amount in them. Um, but real quick, a tip I'll give you with the small media is try to put it right around in these areas on the basket, okay? Something I forgot to mention and I might never not, not remember later, so, um, <laughs> Make sure you uh, put it there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, there we go. And I'll be back when we get these full with the other stuff. Now, I think I've got them distributed pretty evenly through each one, the big and the small media, okay? Now, you usually want to try mixing them up. I haven't actually looked into why you should have one over the other or one below the other, or why you should have it mixed up. I haven't really looked into it, so I couldn't give you an honest opinion. But, um, I believe last time I checked the flow chart, is that the water comes down on the media baskets. So, if you wanted to think infiltration-wise, you would probably want the, the big ones on top to help catch any particulate matter that gets by, too. Because it's obviously got more of a surface area to catch it. So, um, I don't know, that's just a quick theory. I just kind of literally thought off the top of my head, so. Um, but anyways, I usually just shake them up. And I just try to evenly disperse them. And this is where I kill two birds with one step. I, oh, and just to note, if you are trying to actually measure out your uh, G nodes, you know, like if you pour into a measuring glass or something and you're really that, you really want to measure it out between thirds, make sure you shake it first, you know, to get the uh, everything down, okay? So you get a proper measurement, okay? Anyways. Not that I do that, just for folks that might do that. What I do is, you want to make sure you shake it out, and I don't know if you can see that, but that's actually the chunks from the Biomax, or I keep calling it Biomax, or G notes, it's the same thing. Oh, I can see there's more of it there. There's a bunch of it, so that's why I was saying do this over a sink, because it's chalky and it chalks off, so. Usually why I'm doing this, I shake the basket with my hands over it, and that way I get everything out. 
and I can also mix up the media while I'm at it, okay? So, um, obviously I'm going to need to put the camera down to be able to shake this and hold my hand over it at the same time while I'm watching while I'm washing it. Now I have my media baskets all uh, sorted out there and uh, I have them all washed out and have them stacked here. Uh, you can also add some if you want to because one thing you might notice about these is that these media baskets use almost no space when they stack up unlike the other like the Fluval 05 and 04 series. I hate that with them. Anyways so you can add your own stuff if you want to. I don't know if it says you can or can't in the instruction manual, but common sense tells me that there's no reason you can't. The thing you're gonna want to do is just go ahead and put it in there and make sure you have it arranged the way you want it to. Okay. And there's two guide bars in here. I don't know if you can see the head top of them. See, there's one, and then there's two. And if you notice on here, there's guide slots there. Okay. And then you just slide it right in and there you are and then you put this back in and it should be obvious which way that goes back in it can only fit one way and then you're gonna take your top sometimes the cord gets stuck there or these things get pushed back okay and you want to make sure these things are all the way out or else it won't go all the, this thing won't go all the way back on okay so it's back on and then of course you shut these all right might be a little bit harder than the last time you took it off because remember we put that o-ring on there so and of course make sure it fits on there and it's not coming off and you're going to want to lift this up and obviously this one is going to go in uh, the, the mechanical one has this primer on the top and this is going to go on the left side because this is the one with the hole for it in there and you're also going to when you putting it in see that little sl slit there that's how you know which way it goes in because it has to fit into there so and then you just lock it pop lock and drop it same thing with the carbon one. Slits there, and you just, that's how you unlock it, lock it back in. Okay, now the filter is done. Actually, we have one more component for the filter, at least that I put on for right now, and let me get it out. And you might want to water these up, but you don't have to, because uh, they are O-rings. You just have your, uh, your uh, in and out sockets here and the side with the I don't know if you can see that the arrows on it so you know which ones in and out will face forward and of course you'll lift this part up and then you'll lift this other lever up here okay you will slide it in put that lever down you might have to push this a little bit when you do that and then put this back down Oh, maybe I didn't push it down all the way. Oh, here we go. It's just really hard. This one's a hard one. Brand new. Anyways, and there you go. There you have your flow control set up. And the next thing we are going to do is obviously set the brackets for the intake and the output in the tubing up. I'm going to show you how to set it up. Here we have our parts kit. I know it's a little uh, messed up and jumbled around, but it's okay. I don't feel like organizing it. We have our filter now with all the cartridges ready to go. And we have our uh, hose in and out already connected. And really we won't be needing this yet, but th here's your tubing in here. We'll go ahead and bring this over to, I'm not actually, uh, the tank I'm actually going to put it on isn't quite set up yet. Like I have said many times, I'm redoing my tanks right now. So um, this is, all, but I, I have an example tank here I can show you. First you've got this, I don't even know what this is for. I don't think it says anything in the directions. I think it's supposed to be an O-ring picker just to pick up sorts. Um, I gotta be honest with you, I never really looked in the directions for it, but I don't know what it's for. So, I might say, I might find out what this is for and say it in one of the other parts that probably will come out before this. Of course, this is one of your O-ring suction cups. You can use it for, I believe this is meant to be used with your out, your output. Okay. One of the suction cups. 
Then you've got your double output with the duckbills, dovetails, whatever you want to call them. And they are adjustable in any direction. Alright. And of course, also, just another thing to note, you can also put these spray bars on here, okay? You can have dual spray bars, you can have a spray bar and a duckbill, or you cannot use either of them. You can actually just... Or you can just leave it plain like this, or you can put the spray bar on like that, and of course the spray bar, you know, can move around as well, and it has this end cap thing. And of course you can, like I said, you know, this goes for either end of it, okay? So, and actually, like I said, you get two spray bars, there's another one. Then you have your intake, and you have your extender, this is for the output, I believe, but I think you can use it for your intake, yeah. But your intake can already extend. Okay, see that? I love this intake. This intake is freaking awesome. It's not so awesome for smaller tanks, but it is kind of still really nice. But for bigger tanks, it is just awesome. Then you have your brackets for your in and out. And your suction cups, because there's two suction cups that go on each bracket. You can see here. Let me zoom this out a little bit. Alright. And... There's one, they, they will both face on the inside like that. This, this one on the side with the screw, this is the side that will face outside and you just, or outside the tank and you just literally just pull it on the slot there and, or push it down either way. And then on this side, the side that goes inside the tank there's a slot here. I'm trying to let you see it, but the background of this is black, so it's hard to see. But you slide it in from the side. Sorry, guys. I got, like I said, they're actually both supposed to be facing in because obviously this clamps to your tank, so. Sorry, this is kind of hard to get on. I gotta be honest with you, this is the filter with the hardest parts I've ever had to set up like they are just so solid and just so not, I mean not G6's in general but this particular one I mean just adjusting the flow like uh, in that earlier cut and stuff was just a big pain in the butt I mean everything has just been a pain in the butt with this one but oh well there you go that's what it will look like like some symbols. And that is pretty much your parts right there. We'll throw that aside. The thing I'm gonna do is, of course, you want to think about this ahead of time, okay? You want to make sure you know what you're doing. So, now, like I said, I'm just setting this up for an example for you guys. Pick out your spot, and then the first thing you're gonna do is, after you pick out your spot, make sure this is on there just like this, okay? And remember, this is outside the tank and this is inside the tank and you're also going to want to make sure you decide uh, which is the intake and which is the output now you don't necessarily have to decide that uh, when you're putting these on but you do need to decide it before you actually put the fittings for the inside because on your you don't want your tubes from the filter itself to cross paths because let me see here the the left side this one right here is the intake and that one's the output so when you have this facing your tank you're going to want to make sure that your like if, if we have it just like I have it set up I'm going to want to make sure my intake's over here and, where's my other bracket? and your output's over here okay that way the, wa the hoses don't cross paths because you will run into problems with that just place our brackets you just spread them open <laughs> <laughs> Try to be gentle though, because <sighs> it is solid plastic. So, and then you get it over the rim of your tank, and then you just once you make sure the suction cups aren't like uh, overlapped or anything. You know, you just squish it together, and it's in place. Same thing with the other one. Now, if you want to, you can put on your fittings before this, but. I'm gonna wait here because they are not gonna fit in here with my uh, hood on here and I don't feel like taking it off so all right my suction cups are on now I'm just using this uh, but like I said remember to 
think about what you want. If you have a planted tank, you might want to go with spray bars. If you need circulation, you might want to go with something like this. And if you really just need filtration and you don't want a whole lot of circulation, it doesn't matter, maybe just... Because, uh, like, I have a big tank with quarries, and if any of you guys know anything about quarries, they don't, like, flow. So what I found out is if you just take the duck bills off, it doesn't transfer flow that much. And even less than the spray bars, just use this if you don't want a whole lot of flow. Of course, you can just use the output. You know, you actually don't even need a fitting on the output, but your water, if your water gets low, it'll just start pouring and making noise. Okay. But anyway, so, like I said, remember, the right side's for the intake. So, what you do is, uh, here, it'll, uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have put it on yet, but anyways, this is what it looks like on the end of your fitting that I just put on the tank and your fitting just slides on like this okay and that's what I'm about to do and you just slide it on and it's supposed to be a little tough because there's o-rings in there to make sure it stays sealed right. I just put that on now we're gonna put on our intake make sure before you put on your intake you know you decide this can rotate like that and if you wanna mess with this cap the end cap that rotates around you wanna make sure how long you want it okay so Putting this in, and this goes on the same way as your output does. Obviously, the brackets are the same. So now your input and output are assembled. Now, all we need to do is get the tubing. Now we have our tubing. Now, this is very simple, all right? I'm not going to cut this tubing. The problem is, I'm not sure how this new tank I'm going to be setting it up on is going to act so or measure out for. So it's better off that I don't cut this, but for the sake of the video, I'll still show you. All you do is you take one end, you want to see, make sure the gray piece, which is your little clamper, is screwed all the way up. And you'll notice four prongs. Here, I, I can actually pull this out to show you real quick. As you notice, there's four prongs, and they all bend, but they do break. Um, and of course, you want to make sure these are all the way away from the top. See, like these are on the bottom and that's on the top. You want to make sure these gray things are which clamp are all the way away from where you plug in the hose. Yeah, you got your four prongs here and all you do is you put the hose between the four prongs and there's like a little uh, barb in there, okay? And that's what you connect it to. Alright? Just like this. And, it, and it's going to stretch out. The hose is going to stretch out and so will those plastic pieces. And that's why you need to make sure that gray thing's all the way down. And you just push it in. And you screw it on until, until it's firmly tightened. Or until it can't go any further. And of course, you don't have to take that off. I just took that off just to show you it for the sake of the video. And then you're just going to take your other end. And... plug it in just like that just like you just did with the other end okay now when cutting the hose the first thing I'm gonna tell you is uh, if your tank doesn't have any special requirements okay like I mean like let's say it's not like a super long tank basically if it's if it's not over 48 inches okay um, a suggestion for measuring your hoses maybe at first if, if you have no ideas, maybe just cut the hose in half, just use your eye and cut it in half. And set everything up how you want it, and actually plug the hoses in and everything. And then see, uh, you know, just go from there and cut off any that you have to. But remember, one hose is going to be a need, need to be a little bit longer than the other in most cases. Uh, you know, d of course this depends where you place the filter, but you, and it's usually only by a couple inches, so... Um, that might be something you have to consider if you're under really tight tolerances um, or tight constraints rather. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is um, don't add any more tubing to the system. The filter comes with that amount of tubing because that is what it's made to pump through. So if you add more tubing you're going to lose flow and lose performance and possibly have all the error messages and stuff. So you're not supposed to add tubing, so you need to make sure you can, you're you able to connect both hoses with that length of tubing, okay? I've never had a problem with it. Even on a tank that's like five feet tall, never had a problem with it. Cutting the tubing is usually uh, j just going to be the part you want to 
really pay attention to because you don't want to have to buy more tubing and you want to get it right the first time. If your uh, intake and output are placed, you know, somewhat equidistant to the filter, you know, just cut the hose in half and that'll help you set it up. Remember to always leave a little bit of slack in the line, not just so you can move it around, but if you ever have to reset it up on another tank or anything. And plus, that's just what you want to do. That's what it says to do. Okay, guys. Um, I basically have it uh, set up here on a tank. Uh, this is still just an example, but um, I did kind of want to just show you uh, it working. And I, and I also forgot to show you how to prime it and just to get it started and I will show you how to operate it as well okay here we go before you plug it in you need to prime it and that's what this button here is on the top like I showed you earlier on the top of the mechanical cartridge right here you want to press it so you can hear, see the hose moving in here just like with any other filter pretty much almost any other filter you have to prime it and just press it a few times till you hear the water running through the uh, the filter I usually do it until it actually comes out of the output but you don't have to do that and you want to make sure most of the air bubbles stop that's done and then after you do that then you can plug it in okay and this is of course after the whole setup and after you have all your hoses plugged in because you don't want to run this thing dry, and as soon as you plug it in, it's going to turn on. So here we go. And as you can hear it, it's starting. Of course, that's okay. Oh, look at all that. <laughs> and it is now officially started.